I have a word that I want to just release to all of you tonight. Uh, it's so funny that, uh, that Pastor Denise started out by talking about the prophet's reward um, because I had a vision a few months ago where I saw, how many here have ever had visions? That's God speaking to you in a picture. How many have ever had dreams, spiritual dreams, okay? Well, let me just say that I had a vision. I, I, was just, uh, I was just walking around my house, praying in tongues, speaking, praying in the spirit, and I had this vision of a gate. It looked like an old medieval castle gate, and the gate was locked up. It had chains on it and a giant padlock on this gate. And, um, and as I looked at that, I knew that that was not what God was saying should be happening in this time. See, the Lord has spoken to me just a couple of months before out of 1 Corinthians 16, 9. And I'm going to just use that as kind of the launching point to begin tonight. 1 Corinthians 16, 9. And Paul declared this. He said, God has set a great open door before me for an effective work. How many believe that in this time, God is setting a great open door before you? Let me tell you, Pastor Paul said it tonight. He said, come on guys, we've never been in a season with such great open doors. Come on, the Lord is saying to us, guys, we need to understand this is a season like no other, that it is a time of great, effectual, open doors, open opportunities for a great effectual work. Let me give you the rest of the scripture. And there are many adversaries. Woohoo! <laughs> That's all in the same scripture, guys. How many know that sometimes to go through the open door, through the gate that God has created for us, we may have to face an adversary? How many have ever felt that to be true? But I felt like the Lord said to me when I, I looked at that scripture and I was like, oh my gosh, Lord, what is that going to mean? I heard somebody prophesy and they said, God says we're bringing you into a new season of battle. And I thought, when did the old season of battle end? Okay, because the old season hasn't quite ended yet. So, <laughs> But when I saw that about the adversaries, I felt that the Lord said, encourage my people that I'm actually giving them their adversaries to their advantage and that your opposition will become your opportunity. Come on, think about this. Think about when David went against Goliath, that was an opposition. But when David took out Goliath, come on, he moved into the palace and he married the king's daughter. Come on, there was an, there was an elevation there was a promotion that came because he was willing to face the giant. He was willing to stand and to fight for God. So I'm declaring to you that God has set a great open door before you and before this house in this season. You may have to face some adversaries, <laughs> But God's given them to you for your advantage. God's going to turn everything the enemy's meant against you for evil for good. This is a prophetic decree. This is the word of the Lord over your lives and over this house that all that the enemy's tried to bring against you for cursing is being turned to a blessing for you. Deuteronomy 23, 5, because he loves you. Come on, he loves you. He's turning it around for you. But let me go back to this vision. In this vision, this giant door, this giant gate was shut. But as I watched in the vision, I saw a huge battering ram. Have you, have you ever seen the battering rams? Them used like cut down some huge tree and then they would just start ramming it and just start slamming it up against that gate. And as I watched, this battering ram shattered the lock, disintegrated the chains to the point that the hinges actually came off the gate and the door of the gate lay down flat, giving full access to what was on the other side. An open door. Come on, it wasn't initially open, but that battering ram opened it. And I thought of Jeremiah 23, 29, that, uh, 29, 23, that declares, the Lord says, is not my word like a hammer that breaks the rock into pieces. 
Come on, the word of God that we read and the prophetic word that God speaks to you becomes like a battering ram to break the closed places open to give you access to the blessings that God has purposed for you. Amen? Now, the interesting thing about this battering ram was that on the battering ram was written the words, prophets reward. <laughs> Now, I married into my husband's family 37 years ago, and when you're in our family, you prophesy whether you want to or not. Seriously, okay? We are, we've got four generations in our church, even my grandchildren are prophesying now, because it's just, it's, it's in the water, okay? It's, it's what God has put on us. But I'll tell you, I'd never actually ever studied out what a prophet's reward was. Pastor Denise was talking about it earlier, and I want to give you that scriptures. Matthew chapter 10, verse 40 and 41. And I, I'm bringing this because this is a very much so an apostolic prophetic house. Come on, God has given you an apostle prophet team that leads you. Amen. Let's give a hand to, uh, to Pastor Paul and Denise. Amen. An apostle prophet team that leads you. Ephesians 2.20 says, God has laid the foundation of the church with apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. But in Matthew chapter 10, verse 40 and 41, Jesus says this. He says, if you have seen me, you have seen the one who has sent me. And if you receive me, you receive the one who has sent me. And if you receive a prophet in the name of a prophet, you shall receive a prophet's reward. Amen? Now, what's interesting about this scripture, several things, is that I've, I've kind of studied it out, is that number one, I don't believe that it's just speaking about receiving a prophet. But I believe it's speaking about receiving the voice of God. Come on, how many understand that God wants to speak to you? If you have to depend on a word of the Lord only coming when you come and get prayer from your leaders or from a traveling prophet, let me tell you, you're missing the richness of the voice of God in your life. Amen? Jesus said in John 10, 27, my sheep hear my voice. So if we receive the voice of God, if we receive prophecy, if we receive revelation, if we receive the word of the Lord to our life, then we'll receive a prophet's reward. So when I started studying this out, I discovered that there was actually two different words for the word receive. If you receive a prophet, you'll receive a prophet's reward. Let me explain these words to you because they're very significant for the time that we are in the body of Christ, and I believe the time that your church is in right now. The first word, receive, is the word decomai. Let's all say decomai. I see people taking notes, so I'll spell the Greek word for you. It's D-E-C-H-O-M-A-I, decomai. If you receive the voice of God, if you receive the word of the Lord, this word, receive, means this. It means to embrace, to accept to love, to, uh, to, to bring it into your heart, to bring it into your home, to train up, to equip, to not reject, to love with your whole heart. So this word decomai, really, if you're, if you're going to give a word picture to decomai, it actually looks like this. If you receive receive the voice of God. Do this with me. If you receive the voice of God. Come on, how many have ever had God speak to you? Doesn't it feel like this? Come on, we love it when God speaks. We love it. You see, our ministry back in Florida was actually used 30 years ago. It's actually going to be 30 years on October the 18th. We had this phenomenal move of the Holy Spirit that came in, not just in our ministry, but different points in the earth um, at the same week, the same month, the same year, 1988. Um, and it was the time that God really birthed the prophetic movement. Now, why is this important? Because it actually happened 30 years ago 
We're getting ready to have the 30th anniversary of the prophetic movement. Why was this important? Because before the prophetic movement happened, if you happen to say, I hear the voice of God, they thought that you needed to be taken to a mental institution. <laughs> Come on. I mean, one of, the, one of the mental diagnoses said, this person believes they hear the voice of God. We need to lock them up. Okay? If you said that you are a prophet, they thought you were a heretic. Come on, if you had a prophetic conference or a prophetic meeting, you got labeled as having false doctrine and false prophets. That was prior to 1988. Since 1988, God has poured out a prophetic anointing. And let me tell you, it's not just charismatic Pentecostal churches. We've got a Methodist church in our area that's one of the largest Methodist churches in, our, in, the, in the nation that's actually teaching a midweek course on hearing the voice of God and learning to prophesy. Come on, they're teaching Chris Vallotton's book on prophesying. Come on, we're in a different day. And so for the last 30 years... The body of Christ has been decomai, the voice of God. We've been loving it. We've been receiving prophetic words. We've been hearing the voice of God. We've been bringing it in, in training it up, uh, and, and laying hold of the things that, uh, that the Lord has been speaking to us. It's been an amazing season. I don't, you know, this year even was really remarkable because at the beginning of this year, in the President's State of the Union Address... I don't know how many of you re remember the State of the Union address, but for the first time, the President of the United States mentioned in his address the fact that a police officer was on the job and he, and he was dealing with a pregnant woman who was addicted to heroin. How many remember this story? And he says, he heard the voice of God speak to him. How important is it? What an amazing thing is it that the President of the United States is announcing to the world the voice of God spoke to this police officer on his job, not in church, but on his job, and gave him instruction. Come on, guys. We're living in a totally different day because the church has decomai the voice of God. Amen? 30 is such an important number. Now, you may not have been in the prophetic. It doesn't matter. But I want you to understand the significance, the biblical significance of a 30th anniversary. You see, in the Old Testament, a priest was not ordained to ministry until he was 30 years old. A, a man was not sent out to battle as a warrior until he was 30 years old. Ezekiel the prophet was not ordained to his prophetic ministry until he was 30 years old. You see, 30 years old was considered to be the time of maturity and the time of fulfillment. In the New Testament, we see that Jesus didn't start his ministry till he was how old? 30 years old. Do you know why? Because in the Hebrew culture, in the Jewish culture, the, uh, the, the, the cultural acceptance of a young man assuming the responsibilities of his father's business did not happen until he was 30 years old. Come on. Jesus came along and at the age of 30, he went about doing his father's business. Amen. And it became a time of a launching in to prophetic destiny. Let me tell you, in this season, it doesn't matter if you've come into the body of Christ tonight for the very first time. I'm telling you, you are now positioned for the prophet's reward because there is a maturity and there is an acceleration that is coming right now to the things that God has spoken to us. This 30 number actually also represents an accelerated time of fulfillment. How many could use a little bit of that? Come on, how many, how many have prophecies that you have from a long time ago? Wave your hand at me. That you haven't seen come to pass. I'm telling you, God is faithful to fulfill his word. Think about this. David got a word when he was a teenager that he would be king. But it wasn't until he was 30 years old that he was anointed king. Joseph had a dream of greatness 
a great leadership position in a nation, but he didn't step into that role as right-hand man to Pharaoh until he was 30 years old. So you can see that this is a very significant time for the voice of God penetrating, not just in church settings, not just in the church culture, but penetrating the city, penetrating the government, penetrating schools, penetrating the business world. God's voice is going forth with power to accomplish his divine purpose. Amen. And guess what? He may use you to carry it there. So it starts out saying, if you receive Dekomai, a prophet, then you can receive a prophet's reward. This word receive is a totally different word receive. Totally different word. If this word actually means this. It means to seize, to lay hold of, to possess, to aggressively pursue and go after to grab a hold of and make it your own to take back in a position of victory. Come on, if you receive the voice of God, then you can, this is what this one looks like, then you can receive the prophet's reward. Come on, everybody, reach up, grab a hold of it, and lambano, that's the word lambano, L-A-M-B-A-N-O. This is the same word we see in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 when it says you shall receive power. You shall lambano the dunamis power of God when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. Come on. You shall lambano. You shall aggressively go after and pursue and take hold of and take it and seize it and make it your own. Come on. Come on, a lot of us thought that Acts chapter 1 verse 8 looked like this. Lord, we will receive power. No, 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 no. It looks like this. We shall receive power. So what God is saying to us is we can receive the word of the Lord, but there's a shifting of gears in this season that is going to cause us to lay hold of what God has promised us to pull it out of the realm of the spirit into the realm of the natural, out of the realm of the supernatural, into the realm of reality of where we're living our lives, where supernatural and natural collide, and we see miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle. Whew. I'm telling you, get ready. Look at your neighbor and say, you're getting ready to be a miracle worker. <laughs> so I asked the Lord, Lord, what is, a, what is a prophet's reward? What is a prophet's reward? You know what the Lord said to me? He said, well, Jane, it's the way I rewarded the prophets. <sighs> So I went back and studied the prophets. Think about Moses. Moses was a prophet. He saw God face to face. Come on, guys. David was a prophet. He was a man after God's own heart. Samuel was a prophet. Not one word fell to the ground. How many would believe that? Not one thing we pray, not one thing we decree, not one thing we prophesy falls to the ground. I'm telling you, we're coming into a different season, an accelerated season. The prophet's reward was an anointing for breakthrough. You see, David got a word from God, you're going to be king. He decomai that word. Come on, he received that word. But then he went out onto the battlefield and he faced Goliath. And when he faced Goliath, he wasn't just going, oh God, thank you for that word. Come on, he used the prophetic word to do what 2 Timothy uh, 1, 14 says, when it says we're to war, a warfare with the prophecies that have gone before us. Come on, David Lambano, the word of the Lord, and it gave him the strength and the courage to go out and face Goliath. Come on, there are Goliaths that are going to fall in this city. Let me say that again. There are Goliaths that are falling in this city. I'm telling you this, the devil overplayed his hand last year. He overplayed his hand. You know what ended up happening? God turned the curse 
to a blessing because all of a sudden the entire world focused in on Las Vegas and began to bombard this city with prayer and fasting and declarations and prophecies and God began to fight for your city in a supernatural miraculous way. You are in the middle right now of one of the most phenomenal city transformations that's on the face of the earth. Come on. You're facing Goliaths, though. You're going through your open door, <laughs> facing some Goliaths. But remember what, remember what uh, happened on that battlefield. The second David stepped out, Goliath started to prophesy to David. Did you realize that? Did you realize that the devil prophesies? What is prophecy? Well, in the spiritual terms, it's God speaking. But God's speaking into our future. But do you know that the devil tries to speak into your future? Come on, the devil tries to speak about failure. The devil start, tries to speak confusion and chaos. The devil tries to speak that you're never going to succeed. Come on, the devil tries to, tries to beat you down with his words. And when David shows up on the battlefield, Goliath mocks him and laughs at him, and it says he cursed him by his gods. Come on, that's a spirit of witchcraft. And a lot of the church goes, oh, spirit of witchcraft, I don't need to be here. No, 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 David just stepped right up and stepped right into it. You know why? Because he knew greater is he that's in me. Greater is he that's in me, amen? He went out and he faced Goliath. And Goliath said to him, he said, who is this little boy that you send out against me? The, listen to the prophecy. Today, I'm going to feed your flesh to the birds of the air. See, he was prophesying. <laughs> when the devil prophesies to you, let me tell you what you do. You prophesy right back. Come on, we got to learn to prophesy to the devil. <laughs> Come on, what did David do? He said, you come at me with a sword and a spear and a javelin, but I come at you in the name of the Lord of hosts whom you have defied. Come on, he starts to prophesy. This day, I'm going to take your head from you. This day, I'm going to feed your flesh to the birds of the air that all the world will know that there is a God in Israel. Lift up your hands. Father, I declare that same spirit of breakthrough upon each and every individual that God in their homes, in their jobs, in their communities, in their schools, God, in their friendships. Father God, that you're going to put the spirit of David upon them, Father God. Lord, that you're going to loose the boldness and the courage to stand up against the Goliath systems and against the, de the demonic uh, strongholds, God, and prophesy the word of the Lord that brings life, the word of the Lord that brings deliverance and the word of the Lord that brings freedom. Lord, I loose them, Father God, as David's on their battlefields in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Whew. Now, the, the prophet's reward is increase it's breakthrough, it's birthing, it's supernatural. But I want to just focus on one more thing, and then I want to pray for you. The prophet's reward is also when you show up on a battlefield and God fights for you. Come on. God fights for you. Come on, Deborah got a word. Deborah got a word from God. And then the armies of God lambano that word and went out and faced an enemy. Jehoshaphat was surrounded by his enemies, but he went out according to the word of the Lord and he faced his enemies. About a month ago, I had a dream. It might have been six weeks ago, I had a dream. And this is kind of a serious dream. 
But when it talks about going through the gate and facing an adversary, I think we need to understand the plans and the strategies that the enemy has to rob us of the prophet's reward and to back us down. In my dream, in my dream, I had a vision in my dream. Is that okay? I don't know. That's just what happened. I had a vision in my dream. <laughs> and I saw an attack of the enemy coming and it was going to come against my husband, who I don't think really represented my husband. I believe it represented leaders. It represented believers who wanted to move forward with the things of God, really accomplishing things for God's kingdom. And when this, these enemies came in, they captured my husband. They put poison on his back, which is the back is a symbol of the strength of a man. It's the place that we carry our burden. Come on, if God has called you to something, there's a burden. I'm not talking about an ungodly kind of burden. Jesus said, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. But that's where we carry things. How many of you feel like God's called you to something? Come on, should hopefully every hand in this place. And so the enemy came and put poison on the place that we would carry the burden. And then the enemy took this rod in his hand and he began to beat my husband's back with this rod and beat the poison into him and beat him down and broke him. Now this was the vision that I had seen in my dream. And what was interesting is that I knew that the leader of this group that was coming to attack, I knew that his name was Rabshakeh. Write it down, R-A-B, Rab, S-H-A, K-E-H. When I woke up from my dream, I thought, Rab Shekha, what in the world is that? Is that like a reggae band? What is that? Okay. Had no idea what it was. I looked it up and found it's in the Bible. How about that? I'm exposing the plans of the enemy right now. Everybody put your hands on your ears. Say, Lord, give me ears to hear. So let me tell you who Rabshakeh was. You can go and read it, 2 Kings 18 and 19. I'm just going to just tell you the story. But there was a righteous king in, in Judah whose name was Hezekiah. He was a reformer. He was really an example of an, an Old Testament apostle. He brought back temple worship. He was a good guy. He turned away from wickedness in the land. He had the people of God serving God. Revival was breaking out. It was an amazing time. But in the midst of this amazing time, the most vile, cruel king on the planet in that day, his name was Sennacherib, and he was the Assyrian king, and he came and he besieged Jerusalem. Do you understand what a besiegement is? A besiegement means that they cut off all the supply lines. It's hopeless. It's a very desperate situation, and this king surrounded Jerusalem. Now, this is a man, the king, that was, that was always devising new ways to torture the people that he captured. History records him as one of the most violent, cruel kings that ever walked the earth. And he's the king that the prophet Isaiah prophesied about to King Hezekiah and said, listen, the Lord says, no weapon formed against you will prosper. Say that with me. No weapon formed against me will prosper. That scripture also says, and no tongue that, and every tongue that rises up against you, you shall condemn. Why was that part added? Well, let me tell you who Rabshakeh was. Rabshakeh was the mouthpiece of this king. Rabshakeh was the mouthpiece of Satan. And he was sent to the walls of Jerusalem and he announced to all the soldiers and all the leaders of Jerusalem the plan of the king to utterly destroy them. See, the devil was prophesying to them. And Rabshakeh came and he said, don't think that your God will save you. Don't think that there's any way out of this. 
you might as well give up. You might as well quit. Don't think your leader's going to save you. Don't think you've got it in yourself to stand strong. See, he came in and he questioned God. He questioned the people and told them to, to put doubt in their hearts about their own strength. And he reminded them over and over about the impossibility of their situation. How many know this is what the devil does? And his voice was relentless, relentless, constantly bringing this doubt, constantly bringing this, this accusation in the spirit. And Hezekiah gave everybody instructions, don't answer him. So he went away, he came back the next day, constantly trying to beat people down. Remember the beating down, the poison. And I realized that this was an assignment. His name actually means chief prince. And I understood that this was some kind of a demonic assignment that the enemy wanted to bring against the people of God. And here's his assignment. He wants to get in our heads. He wants to come and find a way in that gets us questioning why. Why God? I don't understand God. Come on, Hezekiah was a righteous guy. Why God, why did this happen? I've been righteous, God, why did this happen? How many of you have a few situations in your life that you wonder why? <laughs> and what the enemy wants to do is he so wants to fill our head with the why that we begin to build altars made out of question marks that disconnect us from the heart of God. Altars of why that become an idol that stand between us and our relationship with God. God wants every one of those idols completely destroyed. God wants every one of those question marks turned into exclamation points. Come on. God wants to answer our why. God wants to fight for us. God wants to turn it around for us. And the enemy was relentless. I'll tell you something, about three weeks after I had that dream, it hit me. I, had a, I got a little sick. I ended up being home for a few days, recovering. And during that time, the bombardment of thoughts in my brain was unbelievable. You're not a leader. You're not a prophet. Who do you think you are? You pray for the sick, but you can't even pray for your own ear infection. Who gets ear infections? Two-year-olds get ear infections. What's the matter with you? I mean, it was just like this, like relentless, relentless. And I recognized it as the voice of the enemy, but it just seemed like there was nothing that would stop it. Has anybody else here ever been through a time like that? I went to my husband, I went to our elders, they prayed for me. And I tell you what, I am on a mission to break you free from the relentless voice of the enemy, the bombarding voice of the enemy that wants to disconnect you from the purpose of God. To come on, to put to death all those questions, all those voices, all those accusations that the enemy's trying to throw against the people of God. This is how they won. Hezekiah, the king, began to worship and praise the Lord. Come on, when we worship the Lord, this is how we fight our battles. Come on. He began to cry out. He began to pray. He began to intercede. Come on. There's, there's a linking together of worship. There's a linking together of intercession. Come on, and this house is going, the Lord just gave me a word for this house and said, you're going to be a power house. Come on, you're going to generate power in this house like a power generator, and it's going to be generated by worship, by prayer, and by prophecy. Worship, prayer, and prophecy. Because let me tell you, when Hezekiah prayed, let me tell you what happened. Isaiah prophesied. 
And Isaiah prophesied, and the voice of the Lord went forth. And he said, Rabshakeh's going to leave. He's going to turn back to his own country, and he's going to be destroyed. That's exactly what happened. He said, Sennacherib is going back to his country, and he's going to be destroyed. That's exactly what happened. He said, this city will not be destroyed. Not one arrow will come into this city. Come on, he says, I will fight for you. The voice of the Lord went forth and it began to rip something open in the spirit. Can you see worship and intercession and the prophetic voice? Come on. God is doing that in this church. God is going to use you. God is going to use you to push back the voice of the enemy. God's going to use you to bring breakthrough for your city. Let me tell you what happened in this story. In this, in this story, right after Isaiah prophesied, within hours, God sent one angel. Everybody say one angel. One angel down and killed 185,000 Assyrians. One angel. God fought for his people. God fought for his people. Now in my dream, when the enemy came, because we had seen it coming, we were able to take that, we were alert the authorities, the authorities came in, they took Rabshakeh and his crowd captive, and we they took them out, and they took the, the rod that was in their hand they were gonna use to beat us with, and they put it in our hand, and they had us beat the back of the enemy. Let me give you a scripture that was prophesied about Rabshakeh and about Sennacherib. It comes out of Isaiah chapter 30, and we're going to close here. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 31. And this is what it says. It says, the voice of the Lord will shatter the enemy. Come on. The voice of the Lord will shatter the enemy. Come on. When an enemy comes against you, you got to release. The voice of the Lord will shatter the enemy. With his scepter, he will strike them down. Every stroke the Lord lays on the back of the enemy with his punishing rod will be to the music of tambourines and harps as he fights them in battle with the blows of his arm.